Welcome to my server closet. That oddly came with a toilet installed in it. Okay, of course, real talk. It is the bathroom, but it's over 71 square feet of space. I'm fairly sure I've seen New York City apartments without this much real estate. So shoving my server rack in the corner just made sense to me. And I can close the door so I don't have to listen to it. Ventilation, yeah, that's a, a future project. But today, I need to deal with these cables and getting them into the rest of the warehouse. Now I could spend $15 on Amazon, wait a couple of days, and get a ready-made product for this purpose. Or the more logical thing, I could spend my Sunday designing, producing, making Flush Mount, the 3D printable cable pass-through to go through my warehouse wall into my bathroom. Flush Mount. Get it? To add to the fun of this project and this video, I'm gonna make this a one day challenge. Definitely because I need to challenge myself to get things done faster with my poor time management skills and not at all because the Prusa printer farm project ran way over and ate up my entire week. Yeah. That does feel like a great spot to stop and say thank you to the studio sponsors of Mandic Labs 2.0. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Prusa Research, makers of machines and materials to turn your makerspace into a mini manufacturing line, and PCBWay. With 3D printing, CNC, PCB, and sheet metal services, they can help you turn your projects or products up to the next level. Prusa for when you want to build it yourself, and PCBWay for when you don't. Links in the description to both of them. Thank you to them for sponsoring Mandic Labs 2.0. Now let's go design. Now, obviously, I've gotten the design done already as you've seen the finished part in this video. Though really, magic of YouTube, I don't have the finished part in my hands yet. It is actively printing right now. But I want to talk you through some of the design points of why I produced what I produced and give you some design tips if you're interested in CAD modeling yourself. I personally use Autodesk Fusion for my design work. I am part of their creator program. I don't get paid to use it. I've been choosing to use it for a long time and it is free for makers to try out for themselves. So you can follow along with some of these tips and use the same design software that I use. The overall design is really straightforward. It's basically a tube with a flange on each end so that it can sandwich the wall in between. I designed it with these pedal finger grommets. So these will be printed in flexible material and they will allow for a larger wad of cables to go through while having a smaller inner diameter. Believe it or not, I want a little bit of ceiling between the bathroom and the rest of the space. The main piece consists of two components, two bodies, one with a outside thread that is a very coarse pitch, and then the other one has the receiving inner thread that matches this. The idea there is of course to have adjustability, with threading, you'll be able to thread it together from one side to the other. A little difficult to do on my own, but we'll see how it works. And also have the printability of the not so coarse thread. The taller threads will have less overhang to them, thus making them easier to 3D print. I also designed it so the mounting flange has holes for screws, but a few layers of material where there are no screws passing through. That way, if you had two people and you wanted to tighten it onto the wall yourself using the threads, you could do that. But if it's not secure enough for you or you're working by yourself, you can just punch through those holes pretty easily and use mounting screws. The TPU grommets have a little lip ledge to them that interfaces with a matching inverted structure on the inside of the body. So they should snap into place and then just stay put once they are inserted into our main bodies. And that realistically is the main design points. I just needed something that was gonna allow me to pass upwards of 20 network cables through the wall. So I need a decent chunk of a hole, but also would just cleanly sandwich up between one wall to the other versus just punching a hole in and feeding cables through there. As far as design tips are concerned, I kind of already gave one with the coarse thread, low overhang thing, but let me show you how I actually created that. This whole structure is basically two cylinders with mounting flanges and then threads worked in. So I'm just gonna extrude up my cylinder, which mine was 96 millimeters long. I'll make it the same thing. And then I'm going to use create and the coil tool. Coil tool will create a sketch of its own on the face that I choose, which I'm choosing the bottom of my cylinder 
And then I'm just gonna make it as large as my cylinder, which was 64 millimeters outer diameter. And then I can easily just grab this arrow at the top and pull and stretch and move this. Now this is a way bigger thread than I want or need. I made mine six millimeters. Then I use the split body function on the main cylinder just to split off the ends of the coil and kind of get rid of them. And then I created my other cylinder around the outside of this, which I'm just gonna create a new body so it's separate. I'm not going to use the coil tool to make the threads in this one. Instead, I'm gonna use the tool, we are, the body we already have. I select the outer one with the combine tool, then the inner one I select as my target body, and I make sure that I'm selecting the cut function. I wanna keep the tool, because I don't want it to go away, it's part I wanna print, and then I cut. Now if I hide my inner body, you can see the threads are cut into it. What I will also do to make this a little more printable is I'm gonna highlight both the inner sections and I'm gonna use the press pull tool. When I use that, I can adjust the diameter of things. So in this particular function, I'm gonna go negative 0.25 millimeter. That'll give me a bit of slop between our two printed parts so that our thread shouldn't have an interference fit where it'd be just too tight. With our final design in hand, we can head to print. So let's go load up the filament and get this thing going. The filament I'm using for this project is Prusament ASA in natural color and Polymaker ASA in dark gray. For the flexible bits, the grommets, I'm going to use FiberLogi, that name always trips me up, FiberFlex 40D TPU and Soriatech 85A TPU. Obviously, they are different colors. This is one of the problems with having a bunch of machines is yeah, you can run a bunch of parts at once, but you need to have that many spools of filament to do so. And I just don't. I only have a black and a white spool of TPU right now. So we're getting two different colors. This project definitely highlights the reason for the farm. I could get this project done in a one day challenge with one machine, but it'd be a little over eight hours worth of printing on that one machine, plus material changes in between. Whereas with this farm, I can run seven printers and get all of the printing done in two hours. A super fun tip I only recently learned, if you have TPU prints that just don't wanna come off the bed, FiberLogi recommends raising the bed temp after your print to 110 degrees Celsius, and then your part peels right off the bed. <laughs> I didn't mention it earlier, but I did design a quick template for the flush mount that I printed up on the Prusa Mark IVs in PLA. Obviously the purpose of the template is to be used for marking the wall. I already have one hole here. This is just where I ran the cable through short term for my internet connection to be functional. I use that as a guide as to where I'm gonna locate. I'm following that up with a long drill bit so I can punch through both this wall and the inner wall to help guide my hole saw for the flush mount. In this size, it needs to be a three inch hole saw that cuts the hole for the flush mount to pass through. And I promptly realized that my original hole was crooked, which meant then the holes that I subsequently drilled were also crooked. So I had to break out this tool, which I swear is not a shiv, but it sure does look like it. I couldn't find my proper drywall cutter, so I just made one out of an old Sawzall blading, just enlarged the hole so I could line up the flush mount inside and out. This hole also ended up really tight against the studs, so the flush mount doesn't sit as flush as I would like, but that actually held it in place nicely, so I could then come to the warehouse side and thread in the inner thread better. The last thing to do is get the grommets in place. I did find a little CA glue was gonna hold them in there better long-term than just the pressed in fit. So I did apply that. Then it's time to pass my currently just one cable through the flush mount. But then that leaves a dangling cord inside the bathroom. 
I alluded earlier, but I had printed a few more things, and these are the brackets that I meant. These are hanger shelf mount brackets for that wall to hang cables up on. Right now, I'm just draping the cable across it, but these are actually specifically designed for those wire mesh cable trays. So once those show up, they will sit on these brackets. And that is flush mount, the port with a single cable going through it right now that looks kind of silly for that fact but there's gonna be a handful of layer two switches out here in the studio, security cameras all over this place inside and out, as well as cabling coming out of that port going back into the office through the wall at a different point. So I can wire up the office dropping ports from the ceiling. There's a bunch of things that are gonna to have to happen and they're all gonna be coming through that port at some point, just not today. Also, before anybody says it, yes, the panel cover is off. It is 90 some degrees in here right now. The AC is getting hooked up this week. Gotta pull cables. Sorry, I probably should have put the cover back on while I was climbing up and down the ladder right next to this thing. Here we are. In the end, this was a very simple project at its heart, but one that I had to get done. And I wanted to challenge myself to not only design a part, produce it, install it, but also make a video about it in one day. And I believe we've completed my first one day challenge, which I am certain will not be the last because I need to work on making projects go faster. I hope you folks find this interesting, not just the overblown big projects that I've got to do around here, which there's plenty more of, but the little stuff too. If you found this video interesting, I hope you drop it a like. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this one day build. You can find the 3D printable files for flush mount on my printables page right now, link in the description. Be sure to check out sponsors of Mandic Labs 2.0, Prusa Printers, and PCB Way. Thank you for coming around, folks. Be sure to get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See ya.